Yes, sir, Jeff. Ikaw na so mag, you be... Ikaw na mag-introduce doon, ha, kay sir. I think we're live on Facebook. Palitan lang. Facebook. <laughs> Maumay sila. So, okay, we're live. So, let's start. We'll just wait. Good morning, we're everyone. Live. Let's start. Good morning. Very great. Yes. Good afternoon from the Philippines. Yes. What time is it in the Philippines right now, Gladys? Good morning. My name is Jeffrey, aka it's... Deadpool, live from Abu Dhabi. It's it's already 10.58, so we are early. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, 3, 3 p.m. Yeah, nearly 3 p.m. in the Philippines. Good uh, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, or good morning. <laughs> Yep. Okay, Marvin, please introduce our speaker for today. So we are we have live session from World English Review. So without further ado, go Marvin, please introduce our I'm so excited for our speaker today. Yes, everyone, good afternoon. And we're live at IELTS Filipino Nurses, and we're honored that we have a new speaker. And our new speaker started teaching his career at 2016 prior to that, uh, 15 years as a lawyer, specialist trainer for IELTS, both general and academic, and also a general English and business English. And overall, IELTS band score of nine and a Cambridge self certified in English language teaching for to adult, in addition to master diploma in those, those and EF certificate. And we're honored now to introduce you our speaker, Mr. Barry Mendel from World English Review Center. Sir Barry. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin, for that lovely introduction. Um, so uh, welcome. Welcome to today's uh, webinar. Uh, so thank you again for, uh, for joining, taking the time out of your day uh, to learn more. So everybody here um, is interested in taking IELTS, uh, going to, uh, to another country. I'm sure you're all aware of the four elements of the IELTS exam, the, uh, the listening, reading, writing, and of course, speaking. Um, we've just got a short, um, short time for today, just two hours. So I wanted to focus on the speaking aspect of the IELTS exam. Uh, what I've got for you today is a presentation. So there's going to be lots of background all about the speaking element. If you are new to IELTS and you've got no experience at all, please don't worry. OK, <laughs> don't panic. Um, I'm going to give you all the background information. So what you can expect in the actual exam, in the real exam. Um, I'm happy for you guys to, to ask questions during the presentation. Uh, remember, this is for you. Okay, so I'm here to help you. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Um, so we can use the chat box. So if you want to type in a question, if I say something that you don't understand, please stop me. Okay, I'm not going to be angry. All right. Um, I want you guys to, um, to finish this webinar um, with some good knowledge and hopefully feeling a little bit more confident about the IELTS exam. Okay, so um, the presentation should last for about an hour and a half. Okay, there's quite a lot to, uh, to cover. And I'm going to dedicate uh, half an hour at the end for, uh, for a big question and answer session. And hopefully we're going to cover all of your concerns and all of your worries. Um, we also have some, uh, some details about World English to, uh, to assist you with your, uh, your preparation. Okay, then. So can we begin the, uh, the presentation? Can we start, start the, the screen share? Okay, Shah, uh, when you're ready, can you start the, uh, the presentation, please? Okay, by the way, um, since we're waiting, I would like to say hi to our 
49 viewers on Facebook and 31 participants here on Zoom meeting. And please type in your questions on the type, um, chat box and tag in your friends on Facebook. <clears throat> so looks like it's just about to begin here we go okay so yeah this is uh, this is today um it's a free ielts lecture um, so I'm from World English Reviews, and that's me, CELTA certified. Um, one of the, probably I, I would say one of the most uh, prestigious and advanced uh, certificates for teaching English, uh, certified by Cambridge English. Uh, this was a tough course. <laughs> uh, yes, I am a band nine. Um, remember guys, if you're paying money for somebody to help you, don't be afraid to ask questions about your trainer, okay? Ask them their qualifications. Ask them their experience, okay? There are many trainers all over the world that, te that teach IELTS, but be careful. Um, there are many trainers that have only reached a 6, 6.5. Maybe on their third attempt, they've got a 7. Uh, are these the people that you want to help you and train you. So just be careful who your trainers are. So yeah, today, Tuesday, three till five, uh, I've got some different time zones going on there as well. Okay, let's keep going, next. So just some uh, housekeeping before we begin. Uh, of course, please use the chat box. Uh, you are welcome to type in your, uh, your comments, uh, your questions. Uh, we will be having a Q&A at the very end, but if you do have a question during the presentation, uh, don't be frightened, please type away. Uh, let me know your question. So yeah, of course, enjoy the seminar. Uh, it's not a test. <laughs> so you can relax, okay? Hopefully you can take on some of this information. Uh, and again, it is free. So lastly, um, information about the, uh, the general review programs. So this is gonna be about listening, reading, writing, and of course, speaking, the general review. Uh, I will give you more information at the end, uh, but of course you can contact our center at any time. Okay, next. So this is a little bit about me. Um, Marvin, yeah, thank you. Um, Marvin actually introduced me earlier, but you can just see on screen uh, a little bit about my background. Um, so I've got, where are we now? Nearly five years, five years teaching experience. Uh, and then 15 years as a lawyer uh, or other hosts. So this is uh, also people that will be uh, training you at World English. Uh, Lee J. De Jesus, uh, a wealth of experience. Started teaching back in 2005. Uh, oh, back to me. <laughs> so yeah, about nine for me uh, and a number of certificates in, uh, in teaching English. Okay, uh, let's, let's move on. Okay, so our other uh, expert as well is Sir, Sir Lee. Again, plenty of qualifications, lots of experience, and another band nine. So back to, uh, back to today, uh, I mentioned that I wanted to focus on the speaking element. Um, I've chosen the speaking element for two reasons. Uh, one, I think it, it causes the most difficulty. Okay, most students do reasonably well in listening and reading. Uh, writing is another difficult area, but speaking for sure causes problems. 
Uh, and the second area, uh, it's actually my favorite. <laughs> uh, I do like the listening exam, um, mainly for me, because I never know what people are going to say. Okay, uh, everybody has a different answer. Everybody has uh, different opinions. So I do find it really interesting, um, more than the, the other three areas. Okay, so let's find out more. Next. So your speaking exam, um, it might be on a different day than your uh, other elements. Usually the listening, reading, and writing are all together. If you're taking the paper-based exam, it's usually a Saturday. Okay, Saturday morning for the paper-based exam. And then the speaking is arranged possibly on the same day, uh, but more than likely on another time and another date. Uh, they have to have one-to-ones and they have to schedule all of the test takers. So for example, you might take your speaking on a Thursday, and then the listening, reading and writing on the Saturday morning. So when you get to your test venue, uh, even with COVID, you must attend the venue, by the way. OK, you can't take the exam online at home. You have to go to the test venue. There are various um, changes that have been brought in because of the COVID uh, face masks, face shields. Uh, I understand from British Council and IDP that you don't need a medical certificate, uh, but you will have your temperature taken um, and you will need to wash uh, using alcohol rub regularly. So when it's your time, uh, the admin staff at the center will take you through to a private room to, um, to have your exam. The first thing that you're going to do is introduce yourself, uh, make sure that it's you that's actually taking the exam, and to prove that you will need to show your identification. Okay, it does need to be an official ID, by the way. So we're talking uh, passports, driving license, government ID, uh, that kind of thing. Your gym membership card. I'm sorry, <laughs> is not good enough. So just make sure that you've got your official ID ready. You will need to show it to the examiner. So with the IELTS exam, there are always three speaking sections, okay? Different parts of the one exam. And it's always with a live examiner. This is really important. This is what makes the IELTS exam internationally recognized because the speaking is very accurate okay it's not just speaking to a computer it's not just answering recorded questions it's live okay and again because of uh, because of covid uh there have been some recent changes uh some venues you will still be live face to face okay so uh, the examiner will be in the same room, separated by a screen, okay? Um, you may be asked to keep your mask on during the exam. Uh, there are a number of venues that are changing to remote examiner, okay? So this means that your examiner is not in the same room, but they are still live. So they will be using uh, platforms like Zoom or Skype. Don't worry if you're not very technical, uh, you're not good with these, you won't have to do anything. The test center will arrange all the connections, they will make sure that everything is working uh, and you're exam. Okay, so either way, it's gonna be live with an examiner. My advice is don't worry whether you're face-to-face, -face. don't worry whether the examiner is remote. Um, don't worry which country you're going to take the exam. I've, I've heard all of the rumors, you know, the, um, the Thailand examiners are more generous. <laughs> um, if you get uh, a foreign examiner, that's better than a Filipino examiner. I've heard all of these rumors before. Uh, believe me, guys, it makes no difference. Okay. The examiners 
have to meet all of the criteria. They're very, very strict, okay? Um, is that they want your grade to be accurate, okay? So uh, there is no favoritism. Uh, you know, if the examiner uh, is really friendly and approachable and likes you, it's not going to affect your band score, okay? The only thing that affects your band score is you. So don't worry where you are. Don't worry where you take them. Um, don't worry if it's British Council or IDP. It's the same exam, okay? Again, people, people tell me, oh, it's easier with British Council. Uh, no, it's the same exam, okay? So um, don't worry about any of that. Just focus on your own speaking. That's the, uh, the best thing. Okay, next. So I mentioned uh, there are three parts to, uh, to the speaking exam. It's the same exam for everybody, by the way. If you're planning to take the academic IELTS or general training IELTS, it's the same speaking exam. So it doesn't matter what your purpose is. Um, it doesn't matter if you're uh, a nurse wanting to go to Australia or you're a butcher wanting to work in Canada. It's the same speaking test. Okay, same one for everyone. And there are three parts to the, uh, the speaking exam, part one, part two, and of course, part three. So I would like to look at each of these parts in turn so that you've got an idea what to expect. So that and when you go to your actual exam, you've got an idea what's going to happen. So that should help you relax. OK, so let's start with part one. OK, uh, let's have a look at the next next slide. All right, part one. So as the title tells you, part one is all about you. OK, and there are some uh, familiar topics. Uh, for, uh, for example, you, you might be asked to talk about your work, where you live, uh, your hobbies, Talk about your family uh, and, of course, your favorites. All right, your your favorite TV or movies. Okay, so um, you can talk all about your K drama that you love to watch. <laughs> okay, um, maybe your favorite food, uh, books, places, and uh, and music. So there's uh, a selection in the actual exam. Um, your work and where you live. Um, can I? No, I can't draw on this now. Uh, your work and where you live, that's the top two. Uh, you will be asked one of those. It's guaranteed, okay? So this is what I like about the speaking exam. Uh, there are questions that you know that you will be asked. The examiner will choose the first question and it's going to be a choice of two, either your work or where you live. So I think you can definitely prepare to talk about either of those. Um, also, by the way, uh, if you're not working, the examiner will switch that topic to your study. Okay, so work and study uh, or where you live. Those two, uh, the examiner will choose one of them. And then there are two more topics that the examiner will talk about in part one. So they'll choose, it could be, uh, could be your hobbies, family, books, any of those, um, but it's gonna be about your personal experience, okay? It's about you, what do you like to do? Now, this is a two-way conversation, all right? What does, what does that mean, two-way? So it's gonna be question and answer, question and answer, question and answer, okay? The examiner will, um, will ask you the question, uh, you are expected to answer right away. This whole section, part one, is going to last for about four to five minutes, okay? So there's going to be three topics. One of them will be your work or where you live and a choice of two other topics. So that should tell you how long you need to answer each question, 
Okay, uh, you should be um, you should be using around two or maybe three sentences to answer a question. Okay, if your answers are too short, it's going to cause difficulty. Um, if your answers are too long, don't worry. The examiner will stop you. And that's not a bad thing, okay? If you're talking all about your work and the examiner says, thank you, let's talk about your family. That's okay, you've done nothing wrong. So it's actually better to give more information than not enough, okay? Uh, so section one, uh, nice, easy opener to the, uh, the speaking exam. You're, you're talking about familiar topics, nothing complicated here, uh, things that you're familiar with. So at the end of part one, the examiner will tell you that we're going to move on to part two. So let's find out what is part two all about. Okay, next, next slide. Here we go, part two. So this is the topic question. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as the long run, okay? And um, what happens here? One question only. Uh, and yeah, you can see the second bullet point. Sorry, guys, you can't choose the question. So if you get a topic that you're really not happy about, uh, you can't ask to replace it. You have to answer that question. There's no choice. Okay, there's no flexibility. Uh, the examiner uh, has to keep that question. There are, there are easier topics than, uh, than others. Um, you know, there are more difficult topics. It's all random. Okay, so again, don't think that the examiner has looked at you and thought, hmm, I'm going to challenge you with this question. No, it, it's all random. Uh, again, just to make sure that the test is fair, uh, and accurate, and that you're able to answer uh, questions on any topic. So in part two, you will actually be given the question in writing, and it's going to be um, in a booklet or on, um, on a laminated page. So you'll actually be able to read the question, and there will also be some suggestions of extra information that you should talk about. Uh, you'll notice that I, uh, I stressed the word should. Uh, I emphasize the word should because the word should is not a requirement, okay? It's not the same as must, okay? You must do something. Uh, you must wear a seatbelt when you're driving a car. Uh, there's no discretion, okay? There's no exceptions with must. But here it says should. Uh, suggestions of things to talk about that you that you should include well it's to help you it's to give you ideas of things to talk about um, if you don't talk about all of them there's no penalty okay if you if you add extra topics to talk about as long as it's um, on the the same topic then that's okay as well it's all just to help you so I mentioned that you've got, um, you're allowed to read the question in advance and you actually have one minute, okay? You can think about the question, you can think about the topic. You can also make some notes as well. Uh, you will be allowed to use a piece of paper and, uh, and a pencil. Uh, again, I mentioned that there are changes to the IELTS exam because of COVID. Uh, I do believe that they no longer give out pencils uh, unless you, you really don't have uh, anything at all. They do encourage you to bring your own pencil, okay? Uh, and again, this is the same for listening, reading, and writing paper-based, okay? Uh, so don't forget to, uh, to bring your pencils, be prepared. Also, just thinking about the pencil, it must be a wooden pencil not uh, a mechanical one. Okay, so you've got one minute to have a think, write down some notes, write down some ideas. The examiner will stop you after one minute. It is timed, so it is accurate, 
okay? It's going to be exactly one minute. The examiner will tell you that the one minute preparation is over. And then they will ask you to talk for between one and two minutes. Okay, again, the word between is quite, uh, quite, quite vague. It's not detailed, is it? Between one and two minutes. So what, what does that mean? Well, if you're very close to one minute, it's on the low side. OK, uh, have you given enough information? Have you spoken enough? Uh, for me personally, if you're very close to one minute, I don't think that's enough. I would say at least one minute 30 is um, is a good target. OK, um, so between one minute 30 and two minutes, if you get to the two minutes nonstop, the examiner will ask you to stop. And again, just like before, you haven't done anything wrong, you've just achieved the task. Always remember that there are uh, more students, more candidates taking the exam after you, and the examiner has to control the timing. All right, so you're allowed a maximum uh, of two minutes to speak, and the examiner will, uh, will say, thank you, that's enough for part two. Now you'll notice that this is a one-way conversation. So this is a big difference from part one. It's only you, okay? You're on your own for part two. Uh, in fact, the examiner is actually not allowed to speak. They can't encourage you. Uh, they're actually not allowed, uh, or, or they're told not to even nod their head, <laughs> give hand signals, gestures, um, they're not allowed to agree, you know, even the, the, the very small reactions, the uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. The examiner is actually told not to do that. Uh, so you really are on your own uh, for up to two minutes. But once you've achieved the, uh, the two minutes, the examiner will stop you um, and tell you that part two is over. So don't guess. Um, if you've done over one and a half minutes, for me, that's okay. Uh, so again, somewhere between 1.30 and two minutes. Uh, if you practice and you're regularly hitting one minute 45, for me, that's okay. All right. Uh, so that's part two. And then we have the final section to the speaking. Let's have a look. Uh, in fact, we've got some sample questions. I just remembered, let's have a look at some sample questions for part two. So next, next slide. Here we go, yeah, sample questions. This is what they look like. Okay, so part two, we've got the topics. So it could be about animals, could be about art. Uh, it might be, even be a place. Uh, they're very random. Okay, and then you will notice that there are usually four things that you should talk about, the, the suggestions. So if we look at the animals, what's the general topic? Talk about an animal that you find interesting. Okay, that's your global topic, if you like. And then we have some suggestions. Where does this animal live? Okay, when you first learned about it, what it looks like. Uh, and its habits. So there's two things going on here. And then finally, why you like it. So first of all, you've got to choose an animal. Um, I'm going to give you just some general, uh, my general opinion about this particular question. In my experience, uh, people that choose the common animals usually have a hard time. So I'm talking about dogs and cats. Okay, yes, you know, there are favorite pets. Uh, most of us uh, either have a dog or a cat. Okay, probably the most popular pets. But are they particularly interesting? Are they unique? Are there things that you can talk about to make your answer interesting? Personally, if I hear a student talk about a dog, I don't find it interesting. OK, unless, you know, unless this dog does something unique. All right. You know, if this dog is trained to do something special, then maybe it would be interesting. So 
my advice, don't talk about your own pet at home. Uh, choose an animal that's interesting. There are thousands, thousands. Okay, so, you know, go with, go with the, uh, the elephant, the shark. Uh, you don't have to be an expert, okay? <laughs> talk about the tiger, lion, you know, the um, jellyfish. Um, I know jellyfish is, the, uh, is a sea creature, but you could still talk about it here. That would be okay. Um, but what I'm telling you here, what I'm suggesting is choose the answer that gives, gives you more things to talk about. I find a lot of people that talk about a cat after 40 seconds, there's not much more to say. You know, my cat likes to eat treats. Sometimes it scratches the, um, the sofa. Uh, what else? It meows. <laughs> now I'm beginning to struggle. Okay, what I, you know, it, it, lives, um, it lives outside. I first learned about it when I was uh, three or four years old. There's, there's not much to say. You know, if you choose an interesting animal, suddenly you've got a lot to say. You know, think about the um, think about the elephant. You know, where does it live? It lives in the jungle. You don't you don't have to be accurate. Uh, it's not a knowledge test about animals. Uh, what about the uh, the piece of art, um, art or a statue? I um, when I'm doing face to face, uh, whenever I give a student this question to practice on, I normally get the OMG reaction. Oh, sir, I don't know anything about art. Um, I don't know any statues. How can I talk about this topic for two minutes? So I'm gonna give you the same advice that I gave about the animals. Think about what, what, you can, what you can say, all right? Make it easy for yourself. Um, if you're an expert on art, then fine. You know, if you're comfortable talking about painters, or, um, or artists, then that's okay. Uh, not many of us are though. Um, so my advice would be to focus on the statue. And again, a lot of people think, well, sir, I don't know any statues. You do, okay? Think about uh, your Philippine history, okay? Probably uh, for me, who are the two most famous people in Philippine history? of all time. Okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, answers on the chat box. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Jose Rizal, that was my number one. Who's my number two? Who's my number two? Initials, um, AB, initials, AB, Alpha Bravo, initial, there we go. Uh, Andres Bonifacio, there we go. So, have you ever noticed the statue of Andres Bonifacio? I, I think everybody has to answer yes. Have you ever noticed the statue about Jose Rizal? Again, I think everybody has to say yes to that. So now, when you look at this sample question, ignore the art, okay? Focus on the statue. And you're gonna talk about a statue of Jose Rizal. Does that make it easier? For me, I, I have to say yes, okay? So give yourself an easier time, all right? Choose the topics that you can talk about, all right? So again, if you're gonna, you're gonna choose Jose Rizal, let's look at the suggestions, what the work of art is, all right? So it's gonna be a statue, okay? Um, you're gonna say what the material of the statue is, uh, how big is it? Is it realistic, you know, is it a good, interpretation of, of what he looked like. Um, when was the first time that you saw this, this statue? Um, if, you, um, if you were born in the provinces, maybe it's not when you were a child. Uh, maybe um, you know, your first visit to Manila um, or a, a major city was maybe the first time that you saw it. Uh, or maybe, maybe when you were at school, you know, um, I'm I'm a hundred percent certain this is part of your Philippine history. You would have learned about it at school, so it could be a video, uh, it could be educational books. Was the first time you saw this statue? What do you know about it? 
Well, if you're gonna talk about a piece of art, a painting, I think that can be difficult. You know, what do you know about, you know, this famous painting? Maybe not much. Now, what do you know about Jose Rizal? Suddenly it becomes easier. Uh, why do you like it? You know, what's, what's nice about the statue? You can talk about uh, how does it make you feel? You know, seeing this important Philippine historical person. Uh, so animals, art, same advice. Make it easy for yourself. Just think um, and choose topics that give you things to talk about. Uh, what about the last one, a place? So describe a place in your country that you know and like. And again, we've got the suggestions, uh, of course, where it, where it is. Um, if you're not good on geography, don't panic, okay? So I'm gonna say this again and again uh, throughout today, this is not a knowledge test, okay? It's not an experience test. It's not a geography test, okay? So don't worry if your geography is not very good. You know, if you want to talk about uh, Palawan um, and you're not sure of its location, all right? You know that you can get a plane from Manila and it takes about an hour. <laughs> but which, which direction are you heading? You're not sure. Don't worry, okay? Um, don't worry about that. It's not a geography test. Um, what else? It's special features. You know, if you're going to talk about Palawan, uh, El Nido, Barakai, Bahal, um, there's too many, too many to name. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about the Philippines. Um, lots of nice places to visit. Doesn't, doesn't even have to be a beach. You know, it could be Baguio. Uh, it could be uh, Davao, you know, uh, I don't know, Bacolod. There's no wrong answer. You know, you choose the place. And again, same advice. If you've never been to Davao and you don't know anything about Davao, then you can obviously guess that it would be a poor decision if you were to talk about Davao for two minutes. You're going to have a hard time. So choose a place that you're familiar with you know, that maybe you've been there before or you know a lot about or you've got friends that live there uh, and tell you all about this location. You, you could talk about Manila, Cebu. Um, it doesn't have to be a tourist location. You know, it could be um, maybe, maybe where your, your parents live. You know, it could be in the province. Um, and it's a place that is special to you. So, yeah, where it is. It's special features, you know, what's, uh, what's nice about this place? If it's, uh, if it's Baguio, um, what's, what's special there? The strawberries, uh, I, I love strawberries. Um, what else, the flower festival? I think that's Baguio, maybe. Uh, but, but choose the place that you can talk about. Uh, what, what you can do in this place, so if I, um, if I decided to go with, I don't know, Vegan City, okay, what can you do in Vegan City? Uh, if I told you that there is uh, a theme park with roller coasters um, and um, lots, of, lots of rides that you can go on, well, is that true? I think probably no. Again, though, it's not a knowledge test. As long as you're talking about the location and you're talking about the activities that you can do in this place, then you're on topic. It doesn't have to be accurate. Okay, so that is important. And I, I really want to, um, to get that point across that you're not being tested on anything else, just your speaking. All right, so as long as you're on topic, that's okay. That's going to get you a high band score. Uh, and the, the last bullet point, why do you like this, uh, this location? Again, there's got to be lots of things that you can say here. So this is, um, this is a selection of, uh, of a part two question. And hopefully by now you can see that even the difficult questions, you know, the statues and the arts, um, you can make it easy. All right, even if it's a museum, uh, again, 
Uh, I always see the OMG reaction whenever I uh, bring out the museum question. Easy. You can make up an answer. You know, you can talk about the Science and Space Museum of Cebu. You know, the, um, you know, all the uh, out of space features that are in this museum. Is it true? No, uh, of course it's not true. But you're not being tested on that. Even if the examiner is a Filipino and they were born in Cebu, uh, they can't mark you down. It's not a knowledge test. OK, uh, they're only grading your speaking. Let's keep going. Uh, let's have a look at part three. So next, next slide. Here we go. So part three, the final section. Uh, this is the follow up. Uh, this is the, uh, the discussion section. And it's going to be the same topic as part two. All right. Um, what's different here? So it's much more of an open conversation. And you're going to be asked for your opinion. Uh, you might be asked to make some comparisons. So it could be uh, two different methods or maybe even two different time periods. Or, um, you know, it could be uh, which one is better, Jollibee or Burger King? <laughs> uh, is there a right or wrong answer? No, there's no right answer. You know, if you uh, if you prefer Jollibee, go with that. If you're a Burger King fan, uh, that's fine. <laughs> um, it's just designed to get you to talk. All right. So don't worry. Don't worry about the question. Um, and also it could be advantages uh, and disadvantages as well. But it's going to be the same topic. So, for example, if you got the uh, the animal question in part two and you talked all about the uh, the giraffe. OK, part three is going to be about animals in general, not just uh, the giraffe but it's going to be about all animals, you know, and you're going to be asked questions that, that make you think, you know, um, so it could be, uh, for example, um, what are the advantages of a zoo? So you've got to think about the positive things of zoos in general. Uh, what are the disadvantages of zoos? Um, so again, you've got to think about, think about the question. Uh, Personally, I think part three is the most difficult of all three. Think about part one, talk about your hobbies, where you live, uh, what TV you like to watch. That's, that's quite easy. It's just to get you to warm up, all right, to relax and to get comfortable. Part two is getting more difficult. You've got up to two minutes on your own. Part three, I, I, I do believe this is the most difficult because the questions are harder you're being asked to talk about maybe unfamiliar topics, okay? Um, it's done on purpose to test you uh, in unfamiliar uh, questions that you're not used to answering. Uh, and the examiner might challenge you, okay? Not, um, not in an aggressive way, okay? <laughs> but they may ask you, um, are you sure? about your opinion. So you might have to justify your opinion. Uh, again, it's done on purpose. Uh, don't worry, you've done nothing wrong. Uh, it's designed to see how you react, uh, how you cope uh, with these difficult questions. Can you maintain your high level uh, in any situation? So part three, uh, kind of similar to part one in the structure. It's going to be a two-way conversation again. So question and answer, question and answer, question and answer. And again, it will last for around four to five minutes, a similar amount of time to part one. Um, there is no preparation time between question and answer. So when the examiner asks you a question, you can't sit and think, okay, you are expected to answer uh, quite quickly. Uh, the questions are more difficult than part one and two. You will be allowed a very small amount of time 
just to have a, a, a quick a quick think. Um, but the time that you're allowed, uh, the the way that the examiners describe this this blank silent period is content related, not language related. So let's just think about that for a second. What's the reason for the pause? Okay, the examiner asks you a difficult question. Is the pause because you don't know the words? All right, that's a bad thing. Or is the pause because you're, you're thinking about the topic? You know, you're thinking, is this good, is this bad? Uh, that's content related, that's topic related. And you are allowed a small amount of time to think about the topic, uh, but we're only talking a couple of seconds at the most. All right, so a very brief time to think about the question, and then you should be ready to answer. So again, let's, um, let's have a look at some, uh, some sample part three questions. What do they look like? So let's have a, have a look. Next. Here we go, uh, just space for two. So we've, uh, we've gone with the animals. All right, these are the follow-up questions. I already mentioned about, yeah, the advantages and disadvantages of zoos. Yeah, you will be asked to talk about that if, if you got the same part two question. Uh, so some other topics that you might be asked, why are some animals endangered? Okay. Uh, is it okay to test products on animals? You might have a very strong opinion on some of these questions. Uh, some of you may immediately be thinking, no, no, it's never okay to test products on animals. Uh, what happens if you give the answer, yeah, sometimes it's okay? Well, there's no right or wrong answer. You know, this is not a knowledge test. So always choose your answer that gives you enough to talk about. What other things can the examiners ask you? Uh, what can we do to protect rare animals? And do you think the relationship between humans and animals has changed over the last century? Uh, quite often, um, whenever we're asked, uh, or where, whenever I ask a student to think about um, a different time period, maybe a hundred years ago, and they say, oh, sir, I wasn't alive. <laughs> I wasn't alive 100 years ago. I don't know. Well, hmm, what do you think that's going to do to your, to your score? You know, it's a speaking exam. And the answer that you're giving is not enough. OK, it's not enough to, to grade your speaking. So, you know, if you don't know what happened 100 years ago, um, I, I think there's very few people in the world uh, that were alive 100 years ago. So we're all just going to guess, you know, even if we get it wrong. Um, we talk about how did we, we view animals 100 years ago? Were they, were they pets? You know, did we treat them as, the, as one of the family? Uh, did we see them as uh, help with our chores, with our work? plowing fields, maybe that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, we, we don't know, but we're gonna guess what happened a hundred years ago. Um, so yeah, don't worry about the, um, the, the knowledge of your answer. As long as you're on topic, that's okay. And the, uh, the other one, uh, talk about a, a nice place. Well, for part three, you're gonna talk about places. Uh, it's gonna be general. So some uh, suggestions, some, some questions that you might expect. So why, why do we even travel? Why bother? Uh, why do people do it? Again, the advantages. Uh, why, uh, so what, what are the advantages? What are the problems of too many people? Uh, why is it important to protect the countryside? Why, why should we bother? What are the biggest differences in the way we travel today compared to the way your grandparents traveled? So there's a variety of questions, but what you should start to notice is the, um, the level 
for part three. It's your opinion. It's comparisons. It's suggestions. It's advantages, disadvantages. It does follow a similar theme. Okay, so don't be surprised um, if you get a question similar to, uh, to this. Uh, there is one thing that I, I do want to, uh, to mention. Uh, and I was thinking about this when, when I was uh, looking at the animal questions, particularly uh, question two. Why are some animals endangered? So what happens if you don't understand the question? What should you, what should you do? Um, well, think about your native language, okay? Um, so you're having a conversation with somebody in your, your first language. And they, they ask you a question and you just have a blank look. <laughs> you have a blank expression on your face. You just didn't, maybe, maybe you didn't hear them. Uh, maybe the way that the question was asked, you just don't really understand exactly what, what they, they've asked you to do. Uh, so answers, yeah, let's, um, let's have this a bit of an interaction. Answers on the chat box. What should you do? Somebody asks you a question and you don't understand what they've asked, okay? They're, they're speaking in your first language. What should you do? So some, um, some answers, please. Let's, uh, let's have a look. <clears throat> answers on the chat box. What should you do in that situation? Should you just have a guess? What do you think? Who's going to be first? First answer. Yeah, come on, guys, type in. Ask the question again. Yeah, so ask them to repeat. Absolutely. What happens if it's um, like that question two and the word endangered, you know, that you're just not familiar? It could be in your native language, okay? And they tell you something and you're just not familiar with that word. If they repeat it, is that going to help you? Uh, ask the examiner politely to repeat. Yeah. Can you rephrase? Yes. Now we're starting to, to get it. Ask them to explain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you've, all, you've all kind of focused on the examiner, but I want you to think about your native language. All right. You're speaking to a friend. You're speaking to a colleague. This is a, a natural situation. It's not an exam. What do you do? Yeah, you've, you've got it. You ask them to explain. You know, you, you say, I'm sorry, I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand what you've asked me. What does, what does endangered mean? Can you explain? This is really natural, okay? It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Uh, we do it, oh, I say all the time. We, we do it quite commonly, okay? If, if somebody asks us something and we either don't hear them or we don't understand them, we do ask them to explain their question. So don't be afraid uh, to do this in English, okay? It does not reflect on your level of English. Uh, I actually find that the more advanced um, candidates are more uh, confident to ask the examiner a question. But I, I really want you guys to, to be relaxed in your exam. So yes, you can ask them to repeat, you can ask them to rephrase, okay? So, you know, be polite. So, sir, can you, can you just rephrase that question, please? That's fine. It will not affect your band score. Your, your band score will not go down because you've asked the examiner to clarify. So, yeah, just, um, just be natural with it, uh, but don't be frightened. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going. So I think you've got an idea. Part one, two, and three. Let's have a look at um, the overall. So we've got the speaking exam, 11 to 14 minutes only. Can you prepare? Yes, I, I've already mentioned that there are some questions that you are almost guaranteed to be asked. Uh, your work, you're gonna talk about that, or maybe your study, if you don't work, or your, uh, the place where you live, your hometown. So yeah, you can definitely prepare. Uh, I mentioned part one. There are also a lot of uh, familiar questions. You're going to talk about your favorites, your hobbies, uh, music, books, uh, TV, movies. 
So yeah, you can definitely practice with these kind of questions. It's a very good chance that you will know what, uh, what questions you're gonna be asked. Um, I'm also gonna have a look at some uh, techniques to actually help you extend your answers, to, to speak at length, okay? There is a, there is a nice technique. Uh, there's also some good words and phrases as well uh, that we can use in the exam. All right, let's, um, let's keep going. Let's get to the good bits that are gonna help you. <laughs> next, uh, next, please. Okay, next, let's keep going. So yeah, um, how is your speaking graded? Now, this is really important. A lot of people can speak English. Okay, sure. Is it what the examiners want? Okay, are you giving the examiners what they are looking for? So I think it's really helpful for you to know what to give the examiners. And there's four things that you've got to be familiar with. Fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and finally, pronunciation. Each one is worth 25%, so they are equally important. There is no one area that you should say, oh, um, pronunciation is the most important thing. No, they're all equally important. You've got to do well in all four, okay? So uh, I just wanna have a, a quick look at each of the four areas. Uh, don't worry if you're not familiar with them. I'm gonna make it simple and easy to understand. All right, so let's have a look at fluency and coherence. So next, please. Okay, fluency and coherence. So there's actually two things. You'll notice the and sign, fluency and the coherence. So <laughs> there's actually two things here. Um, what is fluency? What does fluency mean? Well, the easiest way to describe is the flow of your speaking. And what about coherence? What does coherence mean? It means, are you on topic and are you organized? Okay, is it logical? So again, I like to compare fluency and coherence with thinking about a river um, and thinking about the water that is in that river. How does it flow? You know, is it continuous? Is it natural? Uh, are there any breaks or gaps when the water is flowing? Um, and thinking about the coherence, does the, does the river suddenly change direction unexpectedly? Um, I think probably no. You know, the, the river is going to flow naturally in the same direction uh, on topic. So what do you need to do if you want to get a high band score? Just thinking about fluency and coherence, thinking about the flow and thinking about being organized with your, uh, with your answers. How can you get a high band score here? Let's, uh, let's find out. Okay, next. Okay, so I just want to compare uh, two different band scores here. We've got the five and we've got the seven um, and above. So the, what are the differences? Thinking about the flow and being organized. You will notice that the flow or fluency comes first and the coherence comes second. Uh, they're both equally important, but there are elements of both. So let's have a look at the band five, thinking about the flow. Usually maintain speech, okay? Not always. That's what we're saying with the word usually. Not all the time. So you're not speaking at length with all of your answers. Sometimes, yeah, most of the time, usually. Um, but, mm, but there is some repetition. Uh, maybe some self-correction or maybe some slow speech to keep going. So yeah, the flow of that river is important, okay? If you're going too slow, then it's not natural, all right? If you go too fast, 
that causes other problems, um, more likely to be pronunciation problems if you're going too fast. Uh, it needs to be a natural speed that's going to get you a high band score. Um, what about the second bullet point for the band five? Produces simple speech fluently, but more complex communication causes fluency problems. Okay, so simple speech, talking about your hobbies. Yeah, that's okay. That's quite natural. Talking about uh, that K-drama series that you love, that's okay. Talking about endangered animals, that can cause a problem. So that's going to give you a five. Um, part three is important. What do you need to do to get the seven and above? Well, you can see the difference. Speaks at length. Okay, you're giving long answers without noticeable effort. All right, so you're not struggling. Uh, or loss of coherence. So you're actually on topic. Um, what's, uh, what else? Uses a range of connectives. Hmm. What are connectives? I hear you asking. Uh, linking words. Okay. Words that join things together. They help the flow. Uh, and discourse markers. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what is a discourse marker? Um, they help you to link, organize, and explain your thoughts. So if you want to get a seven, you have to use connectives and discourse markers. Even if you're shaking your head saying, no, I don't want to. <laughs> if you want to get a seven, you have to use connectives and discourse markers. Um, so I just want to have a quick look. What is a connective and what is a discourse markers? Uh, you will be familiar. All right, you will be familiar. Don't worry. Uh, let's find out. Next, next slide. Okay, let's keep going. Next slide. Here we go. So we've got some connectives. Uh, I'm not going to... Hello, Barry. Are you still there? Okay, guys. So we will wait for Mr. Barry to come back. From check. Yeah. Hello, sir, Jeff. Yes. So okay. just wait for them. I think he lost his connection. He's lost. Okay. Let's just wait for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, and. This is different. Hello, Cha. Yeah. Sorry, we lost his connection, so please wait. Okay, by the way, uh, while waiting, okay, while waiting for Barry, so we have an announcement for the next lecture of World English will be on Saturday. So later we will, uh, we will post the uh, invitation banner. Okay, so hopefully guys can still uh, join us on Saturday. And then this coming days, we still have other lectures. So tomorrow will be another review center. And then on Thursday, our regular with Mandy. And then Friday, it will be British Council who will conduct their lecture. Okay, so see you guys. And then come on Saturday, another lecture from World English. Okay, so... Uh, anything you want to add, Sir Sir Jeff and Sir uh, Mr. M? Okay, let's hear it from Mr. Marvin. Marvin, especially for those who's asking to join Oreo Group, this is your this is the best time for you to, you know, tell them. <laughs> Excuse me. 
What about that, Miss Gladys? What can you say about the Oreo? <laughs> I think you're already full, right? So, uh, w just wait for the next announcement, guys, if they're going to open again their doors for you because as of the moment, they cannot uh, accommodate you. Yes, because okay, the Oreo so... group is already full and we're after the quantity over the... Uh, we're after the quality over the quantity, guys. So, we just need to finish first. The one in right now on Oreo Group, and then after that, we can accept for the new members. Yes. And for me, who are our Facebook viewers right now and Zoom participants, on Thursday, we will have Mandy's Mac test. So if you, have, if you already booked your exam and you want to do Mac test with her, so please, you can send me direct message via Facebook. My name on Facebook is Jeff space three jeffrey and on whatsapp it's deadpool okay you can just send me booking request okay guys um i don't know uh, yes this is a do you have any question you can chat in on our facebook or zoom yes so at least chat in your questions guys that. so that uh, when Barry come back, comes back, so he can answer them. Okay, let's hear it from Cha Cha. Cha. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's have a game. Um. It's a synonym. Okay. So give me a word like a synonym. You can type on our chat box. So at least he will yes. just practice or exercise in our vocabulary. And most fun. of the time, I'm posting on Facebook like some of the synonyms. Okay, could you please type in what other words if you want to say that you are happy? Come on, guys. You can share your ideas. Related. Wow, delighted. delighted. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, so instead of using, well, I'm happy yeah, to see my, cool. my teacher. I'm delighted. Ah, I was ecstatic when I passed IELTS. Perfect. You're boring. Yeah, when you eat something, you can feel, or you heard a good music, you feel you're boring. <laughs> yeah, I hope you can use a good word on your exam, so at least it shows your vocabulary or lexical resources. And then what's next? Mm, how about if you feel like, for example, if you feel like you're hungry, do you have any words or phrases if you are hungry? Starving, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so I think. Few word package. <laughs> okay, so, uh, from World English. So they've said that uh, Barry had a power interruption, guys. So let's just wait for more minutes. So if ever that he comes back, we can continue the uh, the yeah. lecture. Okay, so, be, that is actually yeah. While waiting, so. Go on with the with the game, sir, Jack. Starving to death. That's actually a good um, phrase there. Famish. I'm not familiar with <laughs> famish. See, you are good, guys. Okay. Yes. Okay. How about <clears throat> if you feel like you are tired? You can you can type in. A praise or word if you are tired. Um, not great. Exhausted. It'll be lazy. Perfect. Exhausted. Worn out. Worn out. Yeah, this is a good word. 
Mostly on Facebook. They are, oh, there you go. Overworked. Ah, hi, Facebook. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Totally drained. Exhausted. Mostly exhausted. Oh, yeah. Hit the sap. Yeah. Someone said from the Facebook. Yeah, yes. that's one. If you want to. Okay. How about beautiful? Like feature beautiful. Lovely. As Miss Lovely said. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, rear anerial jaw. Uh, hit the sack meaning that is an idiom for bed. you're about to sleep. Oh, Gorgeous. Stella are standing. Perfect. Wow. Jerry Clemente. <laughs> What's that? World creativeness. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be careful with the words if you can, uh, you're not comfortable to use it. Don't use it, yep. guys. As much as possible, we need to, you know, it, it should be sound more natural. Enchanting, stunning, gorgeous. Dazzling, fabulous, alluring. Ooh. Nice vocab to get there, guys. You're really doing your homework yeah. on learning different types of words to use on your exam. Oh. Okay, how about... If you are af afraid. Mm, Type terrifying. in on Facebook, guys, if you are afraid. Other term you can use to your examination. <laughs> What's that? Fee, fee Petrified. Fee <laughs> huh? Really? He was nervous. <laughs> Weird. Other term, guys. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> aside from aside from scared, anxious, terrified. They said from Facebook. I from I pen up from Facebook. I am scared. <laughs> I am scared. <laughs> Petrified, frightened, terrified. Frightened. Frightened. Yeah, fearful. Fearful. Mm -hmm. Sorry for now. Time. Okay, let's move on to idiom. Idiomatic expression. Mm. There's a question from Zoom, Sir Jeff. I have a question. Okay. Are cue card questions being repeated or recycled? Y yes. Lovely. Yes, lovely. Because I think they will change the question after um, four months. But even though sometimes it takes years before they change it. So the more questions you practice, the more chances of winning. Apprehensive from Joanna. Okay. Do you have any extra um, idioms if you feel like you are happy? What are what idioms you can say if you pass IELTS? If you got a, if you got the good result. Good. If you got the good news. Oh, over the moon. Over the moon, Everyone the favorite the idiomatic moon. expression of all time. <laughs> over the moon. <laughs> what else aside from over the moon? I'm on cloud nine. Seven, Seven heaven. heaven. Yes. Pick up me. Real to be it. What about if you didn't get your desired bank <laughs> score? <laughs> yeah. How about it's, it's the other way around if you feel disappointed? Okay, Mar Marvin, just continue. I will chat um, word English. I will just follow up then. Sure, no problem. Down in the dogs, yes. Sorry, mm. Sorry guys, huh? because you know our speaker Barry is in the Philippines and I um they are living in Pampanga, right? Yeah, in Pampanga. Actually, earlier I think the 
they have announcement i'm not really sure because here they didn't send us a notice if we will have an power interruption okay Although, yeah according from sham of where barry is reconnecting via mobile so yeah see barry is trying his best to be with you be guys with so us. just please hold on yes Any more idiomatic expressions, guys? What else? Like a bear with a sore head. Hmm. What, uh, can you think of some idiomatic expression that you are comparing two things? Can you give us some idiomatic expression that we can use to compare things rather? Because some ha are having difficulties on finding one. So if you guys know different types of idiomatic expression that can be used when comparing, please do so. It depends. Yeah. From this, uh, it's very Clemente. Colossal disparity. Mm -hmm. Anymore. So it is in a pod. Dichotomy. What do you mean by dichotomy, Miss Evelyn? Can you just uh, can you please uh, tell us what is the meaning of dichotomy? It is my first time to hear that word or see that word. Ah, uh, yeah, oh, yes, Barry is Barry. coming. Okay, guys, thanks for you know holding. Yeah, not bringing us. So Barry is here. Okay, welcome Hello. back, Barry. Oh, welcome yeah. back. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> my God! No worries, Barry. Like While yeah, waiting for you, me. we have an icebreaker. We have okay. like mini game. Of synonyms <laughs> and idiomatic expressions. So thanks, oh, guys. Okay. For, uh, oh, staying. All right. Okay. So okay. yeah, sorry guys, uh, brown out here. Um, but I'm guessing you can hear me now, so that's uh, that's okay. All right. So um, yeah, let me continue. Um, by the way, I don't mind if we want to go a little bit over five o'clock, um, just to kind of catch up. That's uh, that's no problem. So what was I talking about? Fluency and coherence. Um, so the fluency is speaking at length and the coherence is connecting things together. So I hope you've had some time to, um, to have a look at the connectives. You should be familiar with most of these. Um, so in addition, um, you've got things like and also besides furthermore, uh, some examples. If you want to compare, then you can say it's like in the same manner, in the same way, um, or similarly. So uh, to contrast things, to, to compare again, uh, but in contrast, conversely, however. Uh, so again, we've got some examples there. I'm not going to spend too much time, but just be aware of the linking words to connect your sentences together. All right, let's, um, let's move on. Next slide. Uh, so I wanted to have a look at some uh, discourse markers as well. Uh, here we go, yeah. So what's the function? Uh, so what do you think? So actually, or I have to say, or uh, again, in my opinion, I believe these linking words to confess that something is true, I must admit. Yeah, I do believe. Giving yourself time to think. So this is good for part three. Well, what do I think? Uh, to begin. So, right. So, anyway, uh, again, we've got some uh, more examples at the bottom. Uh, but these are things that we will look at uh, in more detail. All right, let's keep going. Next, next slide. So lexical resource, uh, what is lexical resource? So this is your vocabulary, okay? Um, 
the examiners will be listening to the words that you're using. So if you're using basic words, it's not going to help. It's not going to give you a high band score. Uh, let's have a look at the sample band score. So next, next slide. I want to compare the five and the seven. So yeah, you've probably guessed. Uses vocabulary with limited flexibility, mostly basic. All right, everyday words. I'm talking about the kind of words that when you hear them, you have that, hmm, that's a nice word choice, that reaction. Band seven and above uses some less common and idiomatic. Very little repetition as well. So yeah, if you've got a nice word and you keep saying it again and again and again, what kind of a message are you saying to the examiner? You're telling him that I don't have a wide vocabulary. And uses paraphrasing effectively. Uh, paraphrasing is an interesting one. Um, we're really talking about being able to talk about the same topics using different words. So for example, talk about your job. Well, what can you say as an alternative to job? Your work, your career, your employment, your profession. So what did I do just then? I was paraphrasing the word job. Okay, paraphrasing doesn't have to be the whole sentence. It's really talking about being able to use synonyms. All right. Um, talking about the same topic with a number of different words. That's what you need for a seven and above. All right, some tips to, um, to think about. Next. So yeah, I mentioned uh, good and um, some basic words. Uh, for me, the most common English words are the word good and bad. Uh, yeah, I use them every day. Do they give you that feeling of, hmm, nice word choice? I, I think no, they're very clear but they're not impressive. So let's have a go. This is where I'm gonna test you guys. Uh, let's think about some synonyms, all right? Next, uh, next slide. So I want you to think about the word good, and I want you to give me some answers on the chat box, please. Can you give me some synonyms for the word good? Uh, I think this is an easy exercise. You should be able to come up with a lot. Let's see how well you do. Commendable, that's nice, yep. Any more? So how good are your synonyms? Impressive, yeah, exceptional, yeah. Acceptable, that to me seems a bit middle. Any more? Just give you a few more seconds. Satisfactory, prodigy, yeah, auspicious. Okay, we're starting to get some nice, uh, nice alternatives. Let's reveal. All right, so um, on the uh, slide, next, next slide. Let's have a look at some uh, choices that we could have had. So yeah, excellent, amazing, fantastic, awesome, magnificent, super great, terrific, brilliant, and wonderful. So there is a big, wide variety. These are the words that you should be thinking about. For me, I would recommend never using the words good and bad. Uh, they're just basic. You can do much better and it's not difficult. I think all of you should be familiar with the, these, these words on screen. Um, what about if we think about just for food? All right, think about the word good, but if we're talking about food, again, there's some really nice, uh, vocabulary choices. You know, that meal was good. Hmm, not impressive. Can we describe food? Again, answers on the chat box, cuisine. That's more the food. We're not saying if it's good or bad. So what can you say about the cuisine? Words that mean good. Just We use them just for food. Enticing. Yeah, palatable is good. Yeah, yeah. Again, a few more seconds. Palatable, yeah. All right, terrific, yeah. Uh, say, there we go, savory. Savor is a nice one. Uh, let's reveal. So next, uh, mouthwater, that was, that's the perfect one, yeah. So tasty, yummy, 
delicious, delectable, scrumptious and sumptuous. They sound quite similar. And yeah, mouthwatering. Uh, I do like the, uh, the mouthwatering one. That's probably my favorite. Uh, let's have a quick look at synonyms for bad. So can you think of any answers on the chat box? A little bit more difficult here, but you should get a few. Awful, perfect, exactly what I'm looking for, yes. Any more? Repulsive, good language, yeah, horrible. Uh, definitely, yeah, bane, yeah, bane of my life. Atrocious, perfect. So again, let's, um, let's reveal, yeah, dreadful. I think you got most of them. Thank you, Marvin. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's reveal. So yeah, poor, awful, dreadful, terrible, disgusting. That's another one, pathetic, rubbish. Um, yeah, I would probably say rubbish. Uh, I'm uh, British. Uh, American would be more garbage. Um, but you get the idea. There is so many nice alternatives that you can use. So show off your vocabulary. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's keep going. Next next slide. So grammatical range and accuracy. So again, remember that there's two things to think about here. It's not just your grammar. So first of all, the examiner is listening to the range of your sentences. What what does that mean? The range. Well, simply, it's well simply. Um, it's simple or complex sentences all right so a simple sentence really really short uh, for example my name is barry okay that was a simple sentence what about a complex sentence it has many parts to the sentence and you can hear them so again let me uh, let me demonstrate uh, my name is barry and i come from england all right that was a complex sentence not not difficult to understand but it had more than one part. It actually had two parts. I told you my name and I told you where I was born. Uh, so again, you've probably guessed already what's gonna get you a low band score and what's gonna get you a high band score. Um, what about the second part, the accuracy? Well, you should be uh, comfortable or familiar with accuracy. It's talking about your errors, uh, your grammatical errors. Uh, so again, let's um, let's look at the band scores. Uh, next slide. So yeah, band five. You're mostly using simple sentence structures. Okay, one part. My name is. I like uh, K drama. Uh, I I like Jolly Bee. I play basketball. Okay, these are simple sentences. So kind of similar for me. Kind of similar to thinking about fluency and the flow. Uh, you need to be giving more. Um, what about the seven? Yeah, a range of complex sentence structures. You're giving long sentences. And of course, thinking about the accuracy, the band seven frequently produces error-free sentences. There may be a few slips, all right? Uh, but they don't cause difficulty in understanding. So what, what is a slip? Um, if I say a sentence that's not quite right, but you still understand the meaning of what I'm trying to say, that's, that's a slip, okay? If I say uh, a sentence that's grammatically wrong and you're just thinking, what are you saying? Okay, that's a big error. That's going to reduce your band score. But you are allowed a few mistakes. That's okay. All right, uh, next area, pronunciation. So next, next slide. What is pronunciation? Well, can the examiner understand what you're saying? Are you saying the words correctly? Uh, and this is really important. There's a lot of rumors and misunderstanding. It's not your accent, okay? You don't need to pretend to have an American accent or a British accent or an Australian accent. Don't, don't have a fake accent. Uh, your accent is not pronunciation, all right? Uh, think about the, the word. Are you pronouncing correctly? So when the examiner is listening, are they, are they confused? You know, are they thinking, what did you just say? Um, that's pronunciation. That's what you're being graded on. 
Again, let's have a look at the, uh, the band score comparison. So next. So the band five, you're mispronouncing the words and it's frequent. And also the examiner's having a hard time. They're really not sure. Did you did you say uh, what's what's common for Philippines? The uh, the th th sound is a is a common one. Uh, did you say the number three, or did you say tree uh, that that grows in the ground? <laughs> P and F is another one. Yeah. So if the examiner has a difficulty, it's going to reduce your score. Uh, if you can generally be understood, and there's just one or two. You know, that's a seven. So pronunciation is not the most difficult area. Um, I would probably recommend recording your own voice and playing it back. Uh, you will be surprised that there will be one or two words that you might have difficulty, um, even understanding what you said. So try it at home, uh, record yourself. It uh, doesn't matter what you record, uh, have a go and, uh, and find out. All right, next, let's keep going. So just uh, let's review. What do you need to do to get a high band score? Well, you've got to be giving long answers, good level of detail, and it has to be linked together well. All right, that's the first thing. You've got to have some nice words. Yeah, I, um, think about the word some, not every word. All right, if you go crazy with your vocabulary, it's going to affect the meaning. It's going to be difficult to understand. So yeah, a few nice words is, is nice. Um, what else? Long sentences, not too many errors. Um, and of course, be clear with your voice. If you can do all of that together, that's going to get you a high band score. All right, next. I just want to have a quick look, a quick look, and then I want to spend some time on the Q&A. Uh, I want to think about idiomatic. It is important. If you want a seven, then it does require you, all right? You do need to have some idiomatic language. Uh, so let's uh, briefly, briefly, let's have a look. What does idiomatic mean? Next. So it's a word or phrase that means something different from its literal meaning. Uh, what does literal mean? mean it means the exact so if you if you look at the the sentence what do the words actually mean well an idiomatic expression means something different and it's it's often a joke or an exaggeration and it's used to create a more detailed image than just basic words alone uh, remember the mouth watering expression to describe food okay if i say the meal was good does that, does that paint a picture in your mind when I say the meal is good? I think no. If I say the meal was mouth-watering, well, what's the literal meaning of mouth-watering? It means water is coming from your mouth. <laughs> but that's not what I actually mean. My, my meaning is different. I'm saying the meal is so good, you can imagine that, you are mouth, that your mouth is watering. It's an exaggeration. Um, and these idiomatic phrases are really detailed. Uh, quite often, we don't realize that they're idiomatic. Uh, we don't realize that the meaning is different from the exact uh, words that we use. Let's, um, let's have a look at some examples next. Okay, yeah, I like to hang out with friends, uh, chill out. Uh, I'm into, or I'm not into, or I'm a fan, I'm a not a fan of. I work in the heart of, or I live in the heart of, or I want to go to Boracay, which is in the heart of, in the heart of the Philippines. Uh, I, I live in the heart of Pampanga. Um, or she has a heart of gold. So what's, what's the meaning? Let's reveal next. So spend time with friends, relax. I like something or I don't like it. Uh, where do you live? The heart of, the middle. Or a heart of gold is a very good person. I would suspect 
that most of you will be familiar with all of these. But how often do you use them? Okay, can you show off your vocabulary? Hello, Barry. <laughs> Barry. Okay, guys, we will wait again for Mr. Barry. Because I think he lost his connection again. Hello, Barry. Yeah, he's back. Let's ask him to unmute. Um, yeah can you hear me yes yeah good I, I i lost connection then briefly uh i'm back again all right let's uh, let's continue uh next next slide okay can we keep going next slide Here we go. So we've got some more, uh, more examples. Um, it costs a ton, or it doesn't cost a ton. Uh, quite similar, costs an arm and a leg, or it doesn't. Once in a blue moon, piece of cake. And then we're talking about time. Uh, time flies, quality time, or make time. Uh, and then over the moon, on top of the world, cloud nine. Um, I think, again, you'll be familiar with a lot of these. So let's reveal the idiomatic meaning. Okay, so blue moon uh, literally would be the color blue. All right, but the idiomatic meaning has nothing to do with the color, me the, the color blue. Let's reveal. Next. Here we go. Costs a ton. It's very expensive. Once in a blue moon, not very often. Piece of cake, easy. Uh, and then the time and being happy. So yeah, the idiomatic meaning has a different meaning than the exact meaning of the words. All right, let's keep going next. Now, I like to, uh, I like to call this idiomatic phrase, in case of emergency break glass. <laughs> uh, I quite often hear one of these three expressions. So, oh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, what's the name of? Oh, or maybe, maybe the uh, the student says, um, oh, uh, how do you say that? Okay, do you think this is a good thing or a bad thing? For me, it's a bad thing. Never ever say these expressions. Why? Well, what do you think the examiner will be thinking when he hears the phrase, what do you call that? Okay. I understand why it happens. The student is thinking and they don't want there to be silence. So they just say, oh, oh what do you call that? Well, there's a really nice phrase that you can use. Uh, let's have a look. Next, next slide. Yeah, it's on the tip of my tongue. So this is a really nice one. You're thinking of the uh, the words, oh, um, what what's the name of the actor? Um, what's the word? It's on the tip of my tongue. Uh, so a really good one. Uh, it's idiomatic, nothing to do with your tongue, but it's a good expression if you're in that situation. All right, uh, let's uh, move on. Next. So yeah, um, idiomatic, to get a band seven, some. Uh, you don't need to have too much. I feel if you've got, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different idiomatic phrases, it looks very mechanical. Uh, so be careful not to overuse. Um, for me, just somewhere between two and four for the whole exam is nice. You don't need to go crazy. Um, you know, remember in real life, we don't use them in every sentence. It's just once uh, occasionally. 
is a nice expression. That's all that you need to do. All right, next. So speaking at length, um, remember it's a speaking exam. It's all about you, all right? Uh, can you speak too long? No, the examiner will stop you, all right? It's nothing wrong with that at all. But I want to give you a, a quick technique um, about how to extend your speaking. Let's have a look at this technique. So next, next slide. So imagine that I'm the student, all right? And I say to you, I'm going to visit Japan. And then I stop. So it's not a big sentence. Imagine if you could ask me a question about my trip to Japan. It has to be on topic. What kind of a question would you ask? So again, answers on the, uh, the chat box. Just the first word, all right? The first word of your question. Uh, the hint, they begin with the letter W and there's five of them. Yeah, thank you, lovely. Uh, what, yeah, when? So we've got three more to go. What, when, where? Anybody else? <laughs> Who, yeah, thank you. Yeah, good, so you've got the idea. Um, so again, let's, uh, let's reveal. So next. Yeah, what, where, when, why, who? So if I know what questions you're, you're likely to ask me, I can actually give you that information without you asking a question. I'm going to visit Japan. What am I going to do there? What am I going to see? Where in Japan am I going? When am I going to go to Japan? Why? Why am I going to go to Japan? And who am I going to go to Japan with? I can give you this information without you having to ask. I've got lots of things to talk about. And it gets easier. Uh, next slide. There's also the, uh, the H1s. A few of you touched on these. How? How am I going to get to Japan? How many nights am I going to stay there? Or how long am I going to stay there? Or how many times have I been to Japan? And how much is it going to cost? Now, this technique, it's really good because you can use it for any question. Think about your work. You know, who do you work with? Why are you a nurse? Uh, where do you work? Okay, um, what about how? How did you become a nurse? Tell me about the training. How many years have you been a nurse? Um, what about your salary? You know, you don't have to give the number, but you can talk about how much you get paid. Um, what about your, uh, your K-drama? <laughs> um, what do you like about K-drama? Who do you watch it with? Where do you watch it? Uh, how do you find out what's coming soon? How many hours do you watch a night? All right. So again, same technique, any topic. It really allows you to extend. It gives you so much to talk about for any, any question. Try it. Try it at home. Think of a topic. Think about the five W's and the three H's. It, uh, you can extend your answer. All right. Just when you think you've finished and you've got nothing more to say, move on, you know, move on to how much, move on to why, okay? And again, you can keep going and going. So a really nice technique. All right, next. So there they are all, uh, all together. Uh, try it at home, think of a new topic and practice what, where, when, why, who, how, how many or long and how much. Uh, it doesn't matter what order, by the way, if you start with how, and then when, and then what, that's fine. It just gives you things to talk about. All right, uh, next. Uh, okay, I think we can skip, skip the video. Let's skip the video. I don't think we're gonna have time for that. I do wanna spend more time on the Q&A. Uh, so if we give a good 20, 25, let's see, let's see how we get on. Uh, let's keep going. We've also got to look at some uh, promos as well and Q&A. Let's skip the videos. 
you can look at these on uh, on YouTube, by the way. Uh, lots, hundreds of videos on YouTube. Okay, Q&A time. And then we've got some promos at the end. So now's the time. I think you had some prepared questions. <laughs> uh, let's see how we get on. I think we should do this on the uh, on the chat box, and I'll try and uh, try and get through as many as we can. Uh, guys at home, if you've got a question, uh, you're thinking about the speaking exam, you're not sure about something, now's the chance. And there's no such thing as a stupid or a silly question. If you're thinking about it, then ask. Okay, I'm happy. To, uh, to try and answer any question that you've got, okay? So I'm looking at the chat box, who's gonna be first? This is your, your Q and A, Q and A time. Okay, do we have any, um, uh, oh, here we go, here we go, lovely. Uh, ideally, how long do we need to answer in part three question? Okay, so in total, you've got between four and five minutes, all right, for the whole of part three. Uh, however, the examiner will ask you a selection of questions. It could be uh, between four and six questions in total for part three. So how long do you need to answer for each one? Probably between two and three sentences, um, maybe between two and four. Uh, two and four sentences is fine. It's not the same as part two. You don't need to, uh, to keep going for two minutes for every question. Um, but for me, somewhere between two and four sentences for each question is fine. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, we've got, how can one improve confidence when speaking with the examiner uh, on the exam proper? Uh, a mental block. Yeah, you know, this is very common. Uh, don't, be, don't be worried. This happens to all of us. But let me, let me rephrase your question uh, with, a, with a statement. Imagine your first day at work. So everyone here is, uh, is a nurse, right? Imagine your first day. You, you walk up to the hospital. You walk into your department. How are you feeling? I imagine everyone's nervous. You know, everyone is, is frightened. You're not sure what you're doing. You know, it just doesn't feel natural. How do you improve that? There's really only one word, practice. Okay, practice, practice, practice. There is no, there is no secret, okay? There's no magic spell that I can give you uh, to, to enable you to get an automatic eight. It takes hard work, all right? I, I, I don't want to, uh, to give you false, um, false promises. There's no guarantees, you know, you can't take a course for two weeks and then automatically get a band nine. You know, this is the real world. You've got to work hard. The harder you work, the more rewards you're going to get. Uh, what's this? Is it okay to use idioms in part one? Absolutely. Um, you're being graded on the whole exam, by the way. All right, not just part one. You're being graded on your whole speaking exam. If you want to use some idioms in part one, that's fine. Uh, I did use a few. I like the ones for hobbies. I think they're quite natural. Hang out and chill out. Okay, really natural. Think about your place of work. Where do you work? It's always in the heart of somewhere, you know, in the heart of Cebu, in the heart of Malolos, in the heart of Manila. So yeah, there, there's lots of idioms. You can use them in all three sections. Uh, what's this question? How to get a, an eight in speaking? <laughs> uh, any tips and tricks? Yeah, um, you know, a band eight is a high level. You know, I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Uh, a band eight is a very high level. Um, let me think about, let me, let, again, let me rephrase. Uh, imagine that I want to learn to play the guitar. Okay. I want to play the guitar. How many YouTube videos should I watch? to be an expert on the guitar? Well, the answer is it doesn't matter how many videos I watch. I actually have to play. 
I have to practice. I have to use my fingers, okay? And that's the same for English. So imagine or, or, or think, how many times are you actually speaking English? All right, be honest with yourself. You know, you, you, can't, you can't trick yourself. How many times are you actually speaking English? You can watch as many videos as you want, you know, 10 videos a day. Is that going to get you a Band-Aid? No. And I'm really sorry, but it's not. You have to speak. You know, you've got to be speaking English on a regular basis. Um, it's the only way to improve. Uh, what's this, a question from Honey. Uh, how can I improve the tonality? That's a nice word, by the way. Uh, the tonality of my voice. For me, uh, it sounds monotonous. Yeah. Um, you are being graded on, uh, on, on your speaking, not just the pronunciation, but there's, there's other features to your speaking. I've, been, I, I, I've really been trying to, to use the features during today. Did you notice that I, uh, I really put a lot of stress on certain words, like, like the word stress? <laughs> so I'm really focusing on the key words. Put some passion into your answer. If I was speaking in a flat tone, you know, I want to go to Japan and I will go in August. I hope to get a plane uh, and it will take me five hours to get there. You know, it sounds like a robot. Your listener is gonna get bored. Not, not only bored, but does it sound natural, you know? We, we do stress words, especially in, uh, in, in the English language. Um, there are words of the sentence that are more important. So have some passion, you know, you don't, don't need to go crazy. Um, the Italians are very famous for uh, emphasizing the words and, and the stress uh, and the tone in their, in their language. It's, um, it's really like a, like a song. Um, but actually, if you think about listening to music, they, they do put emphasis on, on certain words. They, they do make more, uh, some of the words more important. Uh, how do they do that? Again, practice, you know, that, that, that's the standard answer. Um, if you're worried about the tone of your voice, record. Record yourself at home, all right? It doesn't matter what you read. Uh, go somewhere quiet, two or three minutes, record yourself, play it back, uh, and then try to improve. You know, that's what practice is all about. Um, what's this a question here? How much or how less do we need to use the idioms to not sound to, yeah. Um, yeah, be careful. If, you, um, if you're going crazy and you've got, you know, 10 different idioms, it, it sounds fake. So there is, there is a, a line um, and it's, it's not easy to judge where that line is. If you're using them all the time, you know, the um, hang out, chill out, it costs a ton, it's a piece of cake, once in a blue moon, um, and it's raining cats and dogs. Well, that just sounds memorized. You know, we, people don't speak using too many idioms. Yeah, we use a few. You know, it's actually quite common um, in, uh, for native English speakers to use idioms. Um, in, in all over the world, um, but a little is, is nice. Remember, this is about quality, not quantity, all right? So it's not a competition to get the most idioms. Uh, that's important. Just a few uh, is nice. Uh, and for me, the whole exam, part one, two, and three, somewhere between two and four idioms for me is nice. Um, I think one is probably not enough. I think five is starting to get to that line, you know, of too much. It's starting to look memorized and artificial. Uh, so natural, a few, uh, is all that you need to do for the idioms. Don't, um, idioms are not the most important. There are four things that you need to think about. Idioms are one of them. Um, just, uh, just a small part. All right. Any, um, any more questions? What, um, what else? Let's see what questions you have. 
while you're thinking of questions, um, I will try and anticipate, I'll try and think of the questions that, that might be in your head. Um, what about body language and eye contact? Uh, I do get asked this question a lot. So how should you, how should you behave in the exam? Uh, this is the same for, uh, for video exam or face-to-face -face exam. Should you have eye contact? You know, what should you do with your body language? Uh, any ideas, by the way? Uh, feel free to, to, to have a, a guess on the chat box. What do you think about your, your eye contact? Is it important? What do you think? I'll make it simple, yes or no. Is eye contact with the examiner important? So lovely, yes, 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 no, yes, yes. Most of you are saying yes. So I'm gonna take you back. Um, I'm gonna take you back to the four areas that, that you're actually graded on. Okay, the flow and the linking. All right, that's one. The lexical resource, your vocabulary, that's two. Your grammatical range and your accuracy, that's three. And pronunciation, that's four. It does not mention your eye contact. It does not mention your body language. So my, my reply is don't worry, just be comfortable, be relaxed. If you, if you, gen, if you, you, know, if you usually make eye contact, then do it, you know, don't be afraid. If you want to look down, you're not gonna get marked down. Um, particularly for part two, actually, I, I often find uh, that students that have written notes and then look at their notes, it's very difficult to keep looking up and looking back at your notes. It can break your flow. So, so my advice for part two, keep your head down, all right? Uh, focus on your notes. You don't need to make eye contact. If you want to do it in part one and three, fine, but it's not important. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay, any, um, any other questions? Can you think of some more? Barry, yeah, there's a question from Facebook. I was just gonna read ah, it. Ah, good, good. Yeah, please. Okay, make a second of copy. From Divina Ann Madarang Salanga. Um, does taking a deep breath before answering the question convey a negative impact on the examiner? <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for the question that's a good that's a good question um it depends on the breath <laughs> uh, i think for part one uh for part one it would probably be a little bit strange you know let's um you know let's demonstrate uh can you tell me about your hobbies please oh that would be strange you know to me uh slightly unnatural uh, you, you should be prepared to answer quite quickly for part one. For part two, you've already had a minute. So again, it would probably be a little bit strange for part two. In part three, it's actually quite common. Um, and it's, I suppose you could say it's a delaying tactic uh, for a couple of seconds. You know, uh, what are the advantages of zoos? Uh, and the student replies like, oh, um, I think one of the positives is that they can be fed and watered. You know, so that, that initial reaction. Part three is more complicated questions. They, they call it uh, abstract, is what the examiners call part three. Um, here we go, chat box. We've got some more questions coming through. Thank you guys for the questions, by the way. Um, if I run out of words in part two, and I tend to use in the future. Uh, is that good? So I think what you're saying is repetition. Uh, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I, I, I got the impression that you're saying uh, if you're running out of words and you repeat the same words again and again, yeah, this is a negative. You know, there is no way uh, for me to describe it other than a negative. Uh, if you keep repeating the same words, which of the four areas is going to be affected? Which one do you think? Lexical resource. All right. You're telling the examiner I have a narrow range of vocabulary. So, yeah, repetition is a bad thing. 
they want you to use synonyms. So you've mentioned in the future, uh, if you're thinking of alternative words for the future, uh, you could say in a few years time, uh, maybe after a while, down the road, yeah, that's a good idiom, uh, down the road, uh, when I'm older, you know, there's different ways. Uh, and if you can demonstrate the different ways of talking about the same topic, uh, so no repetition. All right, but yeah, good, good question. So anybody else? Uh, let's see. What about on uh, Facebook? Um, how can we improve our vocabulary? Yeah, this is a nice question. I do like this. So how can we get better? Let me ask you guys, all right? How can you improve your vocabulary? I think there is one main answer and it begins with the letter R. So chat box, what do you think? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, read, reading, absolutely. Again, I mentioned this, uh, I mentioned this earlier. There is no secret spell. <laughs> there is no shortcut, all right? Um, if you want to improve, it does take hard work. Um, but for me, one of the best ways of improving um, your, your overall English is to read. Um, be careful what you read, all right? Um, there are varying qualities uh, that are out there. Uh, what would I recommend? Well, for me, I would recommend reading the news, all right? Um, if you want international, you know, BBC, CNN, uh, there's some good, good stuff on there. If you want local news, that's fine. You know, if you want news for the Philippines, think about the newspapers. All right, we've got what, Philippine Star, Manila Bulletin, Daily Enquirer. Uh, there's probably a few more that I, that I can't remember. They're all online. And guess what? They're all free. <laughs> okay. Um, but I like to recommend reading the news because it changes every day. Uh, you can find topics that you like. Personally, I always read the sports news every day. All right, that's what I, that, that's what I uh, find interesting. But even the sports news, it's written by a professional writer. If you like the, uh, the health, education, entertainment news, that's fine. You know, it's written by a professional. So yeah, for me, I always recommend the news. Uh, what have we got here? Anna Marie, how can we manage to answer the question if we have little or no idea about the topic? Yeah, I like your question. This is a difficulty, all right? So again, think about some of the hard questions, you know, you're not familiar with. How can you answer them? Well, you're not expected to, to write, you know, a thousand word essay. You only need to have two, two to three, two to four sentences, you know, for, for, for each of the questions. So it's not a big ask. Um, my advice, for the, the topics that you have no idea about. There's, there's probably three ways that you can deal with it. Option number one is to just simply be honest and say, I'm sorry, I just have no idea, the end. You can probably guess, I don't recommend that. Remember, it's a speaking exam. And if you're, you're, you're telling the examiner that you don't want to speak, they've got little choice but to give you a lower band score. Option number two, all right, is to have a guess, all right? So to say, look, I'm not really sure, you know, be honest, you know, I'm not really sure about this topic, but in my imagination, dot, 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 dot. If I had to guess, I think dot, 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 dot. Or the third option is to actually make up a story, make up an answer, be creative. Now, my, my preference is option two or three. Um, and it depends, you know, it depends on the question. It depends on how comfortable you are. Uh, but I would always advise you to answer the question. Uh, you can be honest as long as you can, um, as long as you're able to, to talk, as long as you're willing to talk, that's the key. Uh, and if you want to create a story, that's fine. It doesn't have to be true. Um, what have we got here? Rehearse the vocabs. Uh, 
can you rephrase your question? There we go. That's uh, I, I, I'm practicing what I'm advising. I don't understand your question. So this is Ken Gell uh, and rehearse the vocab. So I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, so come, I'll come back to that one maybe. What are the numbers that the examiner is writing on a piece of paper? What if I see a low score, right? Um, okay, I can tell you the examiners are writing. However, they will not, and I repeat, they will not write band scores. This is a common uh, misunderstanding. What are the examiners writing? I will tell you, and it's not a secret, the examiners are writing the time, okay? So, you know, if it's uh, middle of the afternoon and they write 2.10, two <laughs> it just means 10 minutes past two. The examiners are actually under a lot of pressure to keep to the time. They actually get penalized. The examiner will be told off if the exam goes for more than 14 minutes. And, and likewise, if the exam is cut short, the examiners are actually told off. Um, can you believe that? They have to keep you going. So it, they're very strict on the timing. And also for the individual sections, part one has to last for between four and five minutes. They've got a one minute either way. So what are the examiners writing the time? I can tell you right now, that's what they're writing. Um, if you think they're writing something differently, again, don't worry. You know, don't focus on what the examiners are, are writing. It's going to break your concentration, all right? Focus on your speaking. That's what you can control, all right? So don't worry about what the examiner is saying or doing or looking or writing. Just focus on your speaking. Uh, what's this buying time? Buying time, not sure. Can you, uh, so I think this is Marcus. Um, is it Marcus or Marvin? <laughs> Can you rephrase? I'm not sure. What's um, next question? Bogart, Boggs. Uh, I'm not an expert, blah, blah, blah. But my, yeah, that's exactly. Um, it means that you're willing to keep talking. All right. So you're willing to extend your answers. Even if you're not an expert, that's fine. Not a problem. Uh, Hazel, question Is it all right to think for a few seconds before answering in part three? Yes. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Some of the questions can be complicated. So yeah, you are allowed. Uh, there are techniques, you know, we can say, oh, that's an interesting question. Um, so these, these automatic replies, you know, well, I've not thought about that before, but now that I'm thinking right now about it, I think I would say that I agree. You know, so I've just bought myself a few seconds to delay. Um, yeah, you are allowed a little bit of time for, uh, for part three, not for part one. And uh, part two, you should be answering uh, when you're told, not after. Um, what's this? Not a suggestion. Ah, so, Kenja, what was your suggestion? Let me scroll back. Kenja, uh, rehearse the vote. Yeah, so, yeah, rehearse, practice. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's this one? The examiner interrupts me while speaking. Is this bad? No. Okay. Uh, I, I've already mentioned a few times the examiner has to control the timing. Uh, they are very, very strict on the examiners, not on you. Um, they're very strict on the examiners in keeping to the time. So yeah, if the examiner interrupts you, that's fine. Um, however, the examiners are told and they have to be sure to be polite. So they will interrupt you, but uh, I, I can tell you right now what the standard interruption is. And it's two words and it's simply, thank you. Okay, that's, that's generally quite polite. And I think most students should, or not all, should understand uh, that they've given enough for that answer. The, the examiner will simply say thank you. And then the examiner will, will introduce the next topic. So for example, uh, can you tell me about your work? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And the examiner says, thank you. Uh, let's move on to your hobbies. Uh, what's your favorite hobby? Okay, blah, 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 blah. And you're talking and talking. The examiner will say, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, now let's move on to part two. Okay, so yes, the examiner will interrupt and they will be polite, okay? They, uh, they will not be aggressive. <laughs> so they will not say, okay, shut up, no more. <laughs> they, will be, they will be polite. All right, um, what's this? Uh, buying time, hiding lack of vocabulary and ideas. Um, so can you delay and delay and delay and then your exam is over? Uh, I think that's what you're suggesting. Um, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, for me, it's bad. Okay. Um, remember, it's your exam. You need to demonstrate your vocabulary. And, you know, if you delay long enough and you've just not given enough speaking, again, you're going to give the examiner a little opportunity but to, but to mark you down. So, you know, do we want to delay? Not really. You know, I, I don't recommend it. A couple of seconds, that's fine. And then you should be talking. You know, you've got to meet the four criteria. You've got to do well in all four. The speaking at length uh, linked together, the good vocabulary, uh, the grammatical range and accuracy and the pronunciation. Uh, so don't delay too long. All right, maybe one or two more, um, maybe last question, last chance. Uh, and then we've got some, um, I, I've got to talk about some promotions. <laughs> Otherwise I'll get in trouble. So um, what's this last question? Uh, do the examiners, uh, the, the face or the reactions of the, the examiners, they smile, uh, they sound. Uh, yeah, again, the examiners are under instructions. They, the examiners are told. Uh, they, they shouldn't be reacting to your speaking. Uh, they're actually told not to speak over you. Uh, that's different from an interruption. So while you are speaking, they should not be speaking at the same time. There should be no, ah, oh, okay, yeah, really. Uh, the examiner should not be doing that. Uh, those are all positive. Uh, the, exam the examiner should not be negative. Uh, there should be no negative sounds uh, or reactions during your speaking. It's not fair. You know, this is your exam. And if the examiner is, uh, is tutting, you know, you know, making noises, uh, it, it can be off-putting. So, yeah, it's not fair. Um, I've never heard of it happening. If it, do, uh, if it does happen, then, then you can complain. Um, but I would be very surprised. Uh, very surprised. The, the examiners are told not to speak over you. They're allowed to interrupt only. Facial reactions, yeah, they can remain pleasant. They can remain friendly and comfortable. A smile, a nod uh, is fine. Okay. All right. So I hope that covers your, your, uh, your, your key questions. I hope, um, I hope you're all feeling a lot more comfortable and confident about the speaking exam. Um, okay, I wanna go back to the, um, the slides. Uh, there's a few slides, not many, just two or three slides that, um, that I wanted to, uh, to show you. So Shah, can we move on to uh, next slide? Here we go, why choose World English? Yeah, good question. There are lots and lots of IELTS preparation companies out there. Can you do it on your own? That's my first question. Uh, it's very rare is my answer. Uh, listening and reading, it's possible. It is possible to self-review. What about writing and speaking? Well, if you keep writing the same thing again and again, are you going to improve? My answer is no. Are you going to be able to identify the mistakes that you've made? Are you going to be able to improve? Are you going to be able to find your weaknesses? not just in speaking, but also in writing as well. So I don't think you can self-review for uh, writing and speaking. Um, World English, I've already mentioned two uh, of the teachers, but there are, um, there are a selection of teachers that are all highly trained. Uh, again, it's that quality rather than quantity. Mm, so important. Uh, and that fits in with the, the uh, not a factory approach. It's not about getting, you know, 100 people watching a webinar. 
Uh, and there's no time for questions, you know, in the door and then out the back. Uh, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to improve your band score. You do need the daily guidance. You do need the flexibility, you know, to be able to work around, to choose the hours that fit for you. Um, there are many dubious offers out there. I've seen some uh, lifetime access, you know, to some uh, preparation schools out there. Uh, I have to ask, why would you want to have lifetime access? Why? Are you planning on reviewing for the rest of your life? Um, for me, that sends a message that you can stay for as long as you want because it's going to take you forever. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a few strange, strange offers out there. Um, so be careful with it. The lifetime access is, is probably the strangest one. That tells me that they just don't have any confidence in training you. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the next, next slide. Ah, discounts, yeah. So there are lots of offers available at the moment. Um, we've got 108 hours, uh, that's a whole month. Um, but what's important here is that it's interactive. All right, there's lots of interactive lectures. These are live, um, so you can actually interact with the person taking the lecture, like what we've done today, you can ask questions. Um, you know, you can make sure that you fully understand. You can take part in the drills, practice your questions, do the listening exams. There are hundreds uh, available uh, on our website. Uh, listening, reading, reading exams. You can have one-on-one -on -one sessions. Now, for me, um, I think the most important method of training is the one-on-one. -on -one. OK, if you're going to be sat part of uh, 100 people, is it tailored? Is it focused for you? No. Um, yeah, you can you can teach general tips and techniques, be quite general. The one on one is really important because especially for writing and speaking, the coach or the trainer will actually look at your writing and they will actually say, wow, do you know, you keep repeating, <laughs> you keep repeating the word actually. <laughs> I just used it a few times and I, uh, I realized that I was repeating. So yeah, the examiner, or not the examiner, the, uh, the teacher uh, will, will look at your writing and say, well, you know, this can be improved for you. It's very personal. Um, and for, the, for the, the speaking as well, they can do a whole mock exam and say, wow, do you know, your, your flow is really good. Um, your vocabulary is very impressive, but you're making a lot of silly mistakes. You know, you, you're talking about your mother and you keep saying he. Uh, that's a common mistake in the Philippines. Um, so yeah, they can spot your individual errors maybe. Uh, or maybe it's one of the others. Maybe um, your vocab is good, your grammar is good and you're nice and clear, but your answers are just not long enough. You know, so they'll work out what your strengths and weaknesses are. So that's why I do like the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, what else? Yeah, you can do it from home. Um, I actually think one of the biggest advantages uh, of this whole pandemic is that we've been forced to, to do a lot of work from home. Um, but actually, it, it, it could be, a, here's a good expression, it could be a blessing in disguise. Um, you know, we can be more flexible. We don't need to commute. It's safer safer for you, safer for us, um, not just in terms of COVID, uh, in terms of road accidents, commuting. Uh, there's many advantages about working from home, uh, apart from when it's a brownout. <laughs> uh, okay, so typically 4799, nearly, nearly 4,800 peso, uh, down to just under 4.3. Uh, 4,299. Uh, uh, that's available for the whole of June. Okay, so be quick, be quick to, uh, to enroll. Uh, what else have we got? Let's have a look. Next. We've got some materials. Okay, uh, we've got a number of books that are available. Academic Writing Task 1, General Training Writing Task 1, so they are different. Lots of samples with model answers, really, uh, really helpful. Um, 
There's also uh, the drill materials as well. So all of the reading exams. Uh, so if you buy, uh, if you buy two, then you get the third one for free. Okay, they are 1100 each. Um, you can't get them in National Bookstore, um, but they are written by a band nine. Okay, so there's some really good model answers. Uh, and there will be a massive variety. So not just task one, um, but there's also task two as well is, uh, is available, I do believe. Uh, academic and general, so choose one. I think most of you today will be academic. Uh, so learn how to write the, uh, the, re the reports. Uh, if you're interested, please contact the admin staff at World English. They will be able to, uh, to help answer your questions about uh, enrolling and buying materials if you want to. They'll be able to help you with all of those. All right, I think we've got one more, one more slide or one or two maybe. What's next? Yeah, here we go. Uh, our Facebook page, World English Reviews. So find us on Facebook. Um, I do believe that there's some special things if you, uh, if you like the page. Uh, so come and, uh, come and ask questions, uh, inquire, and then enroll uh, with World English. We'll be able to help you. We can also help you um, actually apply for your exam. Okay, so we'll help you with the schedule, the date, um, actually uh, choosing a venue that's right for you. All right, uh, any more next? Ah, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so we've reached the end of today. Um, so first of all, thank you guys for staying a bit late. Um, I know we said five o'clock, but uh, these things happen. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I, I managed to rejoin. I was sat here in the dark <laughs> with the power off thinking, ah, how can I get back? But uh, yeah, thank you for staying late. Uh, I also hope that you, um, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I also hope that you feel a little bit more comfortable, uh, especially about the speaking, uh, the speaking exam. Um, so I hope you've got some useful information. Um, and then that's the end. So everyone, um, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, yeah, I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I get invited back. <laughs> so maybe um, uh, I can do another one on writing, maybe focus on writing task one or task two. Maybe, um, maybe guys, um, get in touch with your admin. Uh, let them know what topics you would, you would like to know more about. Um, so if you want me to focus on writing task two. Uh, so if, you, um, if you're really worried about task two. Maybe that's something that I can uh, focus on. Or, or Sully, again, I know Sully loves task one. Uh, that's his favorite. <laughs> All right, guys, we're, uh, we're definitely out of time. But thank you again for attending. So I hope you all stay safe. Hope you all take care. Uh, and I hope to, uh, to see you all again in the future. All right, thank you, everyone. Yes. All thank right, you, thank you, Barry. So goodbye. On behalf of AFMG, so uh, we would like to thank you for gracing us your time. So see you next week. So, All right, take care. Thank you. Thank you again. How about you, Mr. Goodbye. M? Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Mr. Barry. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. -bye.